What did you say to the players regarding their performance at Liverpool and, and what was their reaction to what you had to say? <laughs> well, after the game, I like to speak. We analysed the, the, the performance uh, the, during the week. Uh, of course, we were not happy. We were all disappointed for this. But I explained to the player my idea on the game and uh, we did mistake above all the second part of the game. But... We analysed the mistake and we are working on that uh, in this week and uh, of course we have to look forward. I understand that the, the frustration of the supporter, this is normal when you, lose a, when you lose a derby, but I hope that tomorrow the atmosphere at the stadium will be good because I think we need the support and we need a great performance tomorrow to react well about, uh, after the defeat. And uh, that, that's it. There was no argument uh, absolutely on, on the training ground, in the dressing room. Just uh, analyze the situation and the mistake that we did against Liverpool. Full stop. There had been a suggestion that some of the players objected to being criticised about their performance. No, Is that right? no, absolutely not. There was no criticising. The, the, the player listened. They were agreed on the mistake that uh, we did. The fact that we were not able to build up... Uh, uh, to play a good game uh, at the end, but there was no no argument, no discussion. Just w we have work. I think well the, uh, this week we had time to work, and I hope that tomorrow uh, we are going to do a good performance and try. Of course, the most important thing to win. Fabian Delft though did get involved with some fans on social media and obviously made his feelings clear about what he felt about criticism directed towards him. What do you make of him getting involved in that kind of discussion with fans on social media? No, I spoke with him. The club uh, we spoke, uh, me and the club we spoke with him. I said um, that it was a mistake. He shouldn't re do reaction on this. Uh, but after the game, uh, as uh, the supporter are frustrated. Every one of us is frustrated, and so maybe sometimes you react emotionally. And that, of course, is not good. But I think that everyone can understand. With that in mind as well, then, Carlo, what did you think about Marcel Brands having to speak to Everton fans who came down to the training ground as well and made it clear what they felt about what happened? At I also heard this. I spoke with Marcel, but there was, uh, the, the, uh, as I said before, the the the. the, the the supporters were frustrated after the defeat, I understand, but now we, we, we need the support of, the, of our fans because uh, I think that we have an opportunity, a great opportunity to improve our table in the next game, above all when we play at home. And so I hope that tomorrow everything will be okay. Have you ever experienced fans coming down to the training ground in that way before? Yes, in Italy is normal. <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> How normal? What, what's the situation? No, what's it like? Over there? I can speak with them if they want. I have no, absolutely no problem. Given though that you've beaten Burnley and Newcastle in your first two games, and then subsequently lost against Manchester City and, and Liverpool, is there some kind of context that needs to be given to this? Because no, nothing changed. Nothing changed because. Uh, as I said, our target is to improve the, the table. We did well the first two games. As I said, we have the opportunity in the next few games to improve our table. Our target is to go up. I think we have the possibility. The spirit in, in the squad is good. Uh, and so, of course, uh, there is a disappointment about the, the, the game against Liverpool, but we have to look forward. And a big opportunity being it's at home to reconnect with the fans, I suppose. Yes, I, th I think that against Barley the atmosphere was fantastic and I hope that we can help to, to keep this atmosphere playing well, playing a good game and show good spirit, intensity in the game, a good quality of football. Obviously I have to ask you about transfers again. First of all, outgoing today, Jake Tosin. What is the thinking behind allowing him to go to Crystal Palace? No, Tosin went to Crystal Palace on, on loan. Uh, I spoke with him. Uh, he wanted to to, to find uh, a club that can give uh, uh, gave him uh, the opportunity to play. And so I think it's a good solution for him. And I hope for him uh, the best. That's it. Uh, we spoke, as I said before, after the 5th of January, we had a meeting, positive meeting, but uh, and we are looking for uh, if there is some possibility to improve our squad, we are going to do. I have the total support of the 
of the, the owner of the board of the director of football we are looking for if you want to know the name I, I can say to you I'm going I don't want to mention the name but all the names that were on the paper are wrong so <laughs> what area is the priority <laughs> to improve <laughs> there is no area but also there is I read that I'm not uh, surprised about this that I'm looking for a new goalkeeper that this, this is not true we have a, I have a, a great goalkeeper in goal uh, that is uh, the goalkeeper of the national of the national team and f of course I, we are not looking for a goalkeeper central midfielder though can be can be <laughs> what assurance does though Carlo have you been given as regards money available to spend in this window as I said a player that can improve the squad the quality of the squad that but uh, I am here to talk about football and not about uh, transfer market. I'm going to ask you one further question that isn't about football, but be only because the fans are excited at the prospect of possible further involvement from Alicia Uzmanov, um, given that he obviously sponsors the training ground as well. And there was a suggestion in an interview that he did that he brokered your deal to come to Everton Football Club. So was there any kind of involvement from, from Mr No, Uzmanov? absolutely not. I spoke with uh, Mr Farad, I spoke with Mr Bill, can write, with Mr Marcel. I met uh, Alicia Rosmano one time, but was for social and not for... Uh, th there was no involvement uh, in football. Uh, you've had a, f a few weeks now to look and study your players, and they sometimes say that you learn more in defeat, don't they, than, than in win. So yes. where do you feel you are now in terms of knowing what they can or maybe can't do? Well, of course, uh, I have to adapt the system to the characteristic of the players. I always did, did this and I try to adapt the, to know the, the fact that I know better the player. I try to adapt a little bit the system of play. And so I am quite happy about uh, what, I'm, I, what I see in training. Sometimes in, in some games we did, in my opinion, really well, Newcastle, Barley. We could do better in the last game, but this is a normal step when you try to work and to improve the things. And so, I think that we are going better and better, in my opinion, in the next games. And is, is that adaptation for you, adapting to how they can play the shorter term and these longer term, they come round to what you more on? How, do, how does that work? Sorry? When you say you've adapted to suit what they can do, longer term, do you then start to implement more of how you see it or how does it work? No, I start. <laughs> I have to work on this. So I, I'm, I'm not focused on one system because uh, in my experience I, tr I tried a lot of system and it depends on the characteristic of the player. But in midfield we, are, we have player with quality and so the fact that we can keep a possession could be could be good. We have we have to work on this. Of course, we have fantastic strikers in front, very good with the head. And, may, and maybe to use more crosses could be another solution. So this this kind of things is a, a long term. For a manager, never is long term, <laughs> short term because we have to win the next game. So, but I have uh, confidence that the. The things are going well. So, how do you feel about the quality of the opposition in Brighton tomorrow? What challenge will they? It's a team that li like to play football. They build up from the back. They have quality. They like to play football. It's a team that, honestly, I liked this kind of, of things. Of course, it's a dangerous team because they won against Arsenal uh, at Emirates Stadium. So, we have to take care of, of this. But I hope that. With uh, good spirit, with intensity, uh, we have a possibility to win. And just one finally for me, if I may, just in terms of the personnel available, any news of players maybe coming back or any, any injuries for you? No, we didn't have injury. Uh, the injury players are the same. Andre Gomez that comes back uh, next week and they start to train individually here. We have Gabamen that... Uh, um, maybe I don't know precisely, but he's, he's trying, he's working uh, alone in this moment, individual session, and the same is Ivobi. The other are fit and, and in good condition. That's a lot of news about Andre Gomez, isn't it? Uh, it's a good news because he's doing well, uh, his recovery is going faster, and so we can. Uh, 
I hope that as soon as possible he can be with us because he's a fantastic player. Hi, Carl. Just, just one for me. Um, you say you, you need the support of the fans um, more uh, now. Um, just wondering, have you expressed to the players how important it is for their performance tomorrow when you're playing at home? But I think that the, the fact that uh, I think we have players in the squad that they know really well how is uh, the atmosphere, how it has to be the atmosphere. And so the fact that uh, the, our captain uh, talked to the players, I think every one of the players are involved in the situation, are focused, they take care of the club, of the supporters. And so there is no... Um, I don't need to talk with them about this because I think that they know really well. Okay. Thank you. We'll do, uh, we'll do Thank you. Else, please next. And, uh, please come on.